Hello Engineering 4201 students and welcome to this presynchronous the first of our asynchronous online presentations in uh, this class. Today's class is on contract elements from the engineer's point of view and you'll probably realize this isn't the lesson that was originally scheduled for this week. So before we get started uh, let me talk about how we're reorganizing the, con the content for this module uh, for a better online delivery. Last week we had uh, Lesson 10 Elements of the Law which was presented by Mr. Stepanovic. Um, that online collaboration session was pretty rough I know. It was hard to hear Mr. Stepanovic during the first half of the, the session. Um, I think we got through it okay. I really appreciate everybody hanging in there and doing their best to make it work. Uh, there were good questions asked. And I think we got through the material but I think we find I think we all know we need a better way to do this so I've, I've reorganized the block in a way I think it'll work better for you. So the next lesson for this week is lesson 11. I've changed the order of these lessons you'll notice and this lesson is going to be on contract elements from the engineer's perspective. So uh, I'll be presenting this lecture. Um, it's got three parts to the, I'm sorry, this lesson. It has, there are three parts to this lesson. This pre-class web, webcast which is what we're doing right now. And then there's a pre-class group homework which is due on Tuesday the 31st by midnight. I'm going to take the data information you have from that and I will put together a synchronous collaborate session for Wednesday. I've got a schedule for that whole time but I, uh, or a regular time but I think we'll do it much faster than that um, with your pre-class homework. Then uh, at lesson 12 we're now going to do together with myself and Mr. Stepanovic and we're going to together we're going to talk about contract clauses from both the engineer's perspective and the lawyer's perspective. Again, we'll have a pre-class webcast. I'll have that posted up by the 4th of April. And there'll be another homework uh, for you to do in your groups uh, and post it up by midnight on the Tuesday. And we'll have a, another synchronous session there. And again, I think these synchronous sessions will go much more smoothly with this setup that we're doing right now. And then negotiation exercise, which is the final lesson of the block, is going to be an online, completely asynchronous team exercise. Um, Mr. Stepanovic and myself will be available for help through um, online um, office hours or through emails. We'll help you get through the exercise. We'll work with your teams. But I think you'll find this a much better way to do this than trying to do it all together in uh, some big collaborate session. Uh, the details for this uh, was still working out, but we'll have that up to you well before the time you need to do it. Okay, on to today's lecture, uh, today's exercise or today's lesson which is the engineer's point of view on contract formation. So we have three main uh, 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 learning objectives in this one. The first is to distinguish between proposals and requests for proposals and contracts. The second one is to understand a little bit about costing models. They're important in understanding how contracts are set up, how we, how we price things. And the third one is for you to be able to identify the key elements that are important to an engineer, which is scope, schedule, and cost. Those are the key elements that you need to get out of today's lesson is scope, schedule, and cost. So our first lesson objective from request to proposal to contract. So how does how does this process work? It's really pretty simple but there's a bunch of words that you need to know a bunch of language. The very beginning of this process the first step the client tells potential offerers you the engineer what it is that the client wants. They need to put this information out to you in some format. It's put out uh, that, that the thing that this is called depends on the on the selection method that the owner is using. If it's a low bid selection method then the thing that's put out is called a request for bids or an RFB. If the selection method is best value then the thing that's put out is called a request for proposal. If the selection method is QBS or a qualifications based selection then the thing that is put out is called a request for qualifications or an RFQ. However I do need to tell you that all these things are often called just RFPs so this stage is called the RFP phase or the request for, for proposal phase. phase. The, the next step of, after that is the offers you that will tell the client what you'll do and how much it will cost for that for them to pay you to do these services. If the selection method is low bid the thing you're going to return is called a bid. 
if it's a best value selection the thing you're going to return is called a proposal and if it's a QBS selection method the thing you're going to return is called a statement of qualifications but again there's a generic term for all these ones and lots of times these things are all all called proposals so in the generic term the thing that the con the client puts out the first thing they put out on the street is called an RFP and the thing that gets returned to the client is your actual proposal neither one of these things are a contract they're not yet a contract in order to get to a contract the client has to first select the winning offer and then you and the client have to sign a contract that's the agreement part that you learned about during Mr. Stepanovic's uh, lesson last week you can think of the the RFP as the offer you can think of the proposal as sort of a counter offer and then the actual selection of the winning offer and the negotiations associated with that are what finally turn, uh, culminate in an agreement. There isn't a contract until both parties have signed the contract or agreed to it orally as we talked about last week but in general most engineering contracts are signed and they all should be by the way you should always have a written contract. All right, let's um, take move on to different payment models. This is a very simple concept, but it's one uh, for us to make sure we all understand. Uh, the first payment pot model is what we call a fixed priced or a lump sum payment model. In this uh, payment model, there's one price for all the work. It could also be structured for one price for each phase of the work. So I'll, I'll give you an example to use one that Mr. Stepanovic talked about last week. Let's say I want to hire you to mow my lawn. I'm going to say, look, I'm going to pay you 20 bucks to mow the lawn. Um, and uh, maybe I've got a big uh, lawn and there's a, there's a lawn in the front and a lawn in the back. And I'll say, hey, look, at the lawn in the front is not as big as the lawn in the back. I'll pay you 10 bucks to mow the front lawn and 20 bucks to mow the back lawn. Those would both be uh, fixed price or lump sum models. It doesn't matter how long it takes you. It doesn't matter whether uh, you use a gas mower or electric mower. It doesn't matter how much you spend on gas or electricity. Um, it doesn't matter whether you did it with one person or two people. I'm just going to pay you a fixed price that we agreed on to do the work. The second payment method is what we call time and materials. In this payment method, the contractor and the client agree on hourly rates for all the workers and a markup rate for materials. So we would agree that I, I'm going to pay the, the guy that um, pushes the lawnmower uh, 10 bucks an hour and the guy that does the weed whacking, we're going to pay him uh, 12 bucks an hour and the guy who just uh, um, hauls all the stuff and throws it in, into the back of the truck, we're only going to pay him $8 an hour. Um, and um, uh, you're going to tell me how much you spend on gas and um, I'm going to um, allow you to charge 10% 10, 10 more than you paid for the gas for all the trouble to go get it and everything and uh, that's what we're going to agree on. So then you as a contractor have to keep track of all the time and the materials you spent on the contract. So you're going to keep track of how many hours did it take you to mow the front lawn, how many hours did it take you to mow the back lawn, how many hours was the person pushing the mower? How many hours was the person doing the weed whacking? How much, how much was just your you know, common laborer who was just hauling stuff around for you? And, and how much did you spend on gasoline and, and garbage bags and uh, any other material you used? Uh, and then you're going to send me a bill for the time and all the materials used, and I'll pay you um, based on the hours and the time you actually spent doing the job. So obviously these two uh, pricing methods change where the risk is in terms of pricing. In the time of materials, um, it's, it's, if there's uncertainty about how long it's going to take to do something, then the risk is more on the client. Uh, where with the lump sum price, the risk is all on the contractor because if, some, if they run into trouble and it takes longer to do it than they expected, it's not going to change the price to the client. The final pricing is something we call unit pricing. This is a real common way to do stuff. It's really common in, in uh, um, construction contracts. But in this um, price, the contractor and the, and the client agree on costs for all items based on quantity. In construction contracts, this could be like 
we're going to pay you so many dollars per square foot of concrete laid for sidewalk or, or we're going to pay you so many dollars for lineal foot of chain link fence installed it could also be we're going to pay you so many dollars for the use of equipment um, it, in um, engineering sense sometimes it's more like we can pay you so many dollars for a test I'm going to run a standard proctor test that the cost for doing a standard proctor test is $150 um, sometimes we even price meetings I used to price meetings in Los Angeles all the time it cost so many dollars for me to go to a meeting because in Los Angeles meetings were either a half day meeting or all day meetings because uh, getting around town was so hard that I knew that even if I had a one hour meeting it was basically going to take me half a day to get to the meeting have the meeting uh, write my notes up and get back and so it was pretty easy for me to price meetings as a dollars per meeting it was either a half day meeting or a full day meeting and sometimes uh, you can price things as dollars per report if you know if you're doing a very simple kind of uh, report and there's a very common one and you know exactly what you're going to have to do to do your uh, engineering to produce the report sometimes you can price stuff by the report so back to our lawn mowing example in this case we might be pricing uh, the lawn mowing by dollars per square yard mowed for the for the mowing and dollars per lineal foot for the weed whacking and the trimming um, and then maybe we're going to price our, that we might price our equipment into those costs already or we might just say hey look at we've got three different kinds of lawnmowers we've got this little push mower and that's going to be um, fifty dollars a day to use or or it could be a dollars per hour for that one it could be that's going to be um, you know uh, ten dollars per hour to use we've got the big one that uh, we ride on you know that one's going to be twenty five dollars an hour to use and so we uh, we would agree on prices for all these things by unit then you and the contract as a contractor would keep track of all the amounts say hey look at your your front yard was 50 uh, square yards so I mowed that it was 50 square yards times our price per yard um, there were um, 80 lineal feet of um, weed whacking to do so you're going to pay me 80 lineal 80 lineal feet times whatever dollars we agreed per lineal foot and uh, my weed whacker was uh, five dollars an hour and my lawnmower was ten dollars an hour and so we add up all that and that's what you get paid so these are three ways we uh, price things in contracts and they all work out differently and they change the way we do our work all right well that covers our second lesson objective on payment models now let's get to the heart of this class which is uh, on elements of the contract from the engineers point of view but before I get to elements of contract in an engineer's point of view, I want to review the stuff that we learned from last lesson on the legal elements of a contract. So we talked about a lot of things last lesson, but I want to, I want to get down to the key elements that I want you to understand about a contract and what it means to legally have a contract. To legally have a contract, there has to be an offer the offer and we talked about the details of what how that offer has to be presented there has to be an acceptance of that offer those are the two to the first two elements those two combined are an agreement the next element that's key is consideration consideration is the one I think most people have the biggest problem with just because it's a not a normal term for engineering it's a it's a legal term consideration means each party has to have given something of value to the other party so typically in an engineering contract this is I'm going to provide you engineering services such as the design for a building that's what I'm providing the owner uh, that's my consideration to the owner and that owner's consideration back to me is they're going to pay me money so this is generally what consideration means but it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be money and it can be anything of value but consideration means that there has to be something traded one way or back we can if we can have an agreement but if there's nothing that's going a value that's going between the client and the service provider or the client and the contractor then it's not a contract so there has to be consideration we talked about other uh, uh, elements they are very very important from a legal standpoint we talked about capacity that is the person signing the contract has to be have the capacity to sign a contract um, your eight-year-old son can't sign a contract to get your front lawn mowed for you because they're not of age or somebody who's who's um, 
doesn't legally have the authority to sign a contract. And then we talked about le legality, that it has to be actually for legal work. In Texas, you can't sign a contract for me to grow marijuana for you, for instance. There's lots of, these are all very, very important from a legal standpoint, but from for our structure, for our course, the key thing that I want you to understand is about the offer, acceptance, and consideration. That's the, Those are the three key elements from our point of view in this course that are critical for you to understand. All right, now let's get to the engineer's point of view. So we can have a contract there's a clear offer, it's clearly been accept, accepted, there are considerations, it's all legal, it can still be totally useless to the engineer. It's only going to be useful to the engineer if it has the following elements. The first is there has to be a very clear scope. And by scope we mean what is the work that the engineer is going to provide for the client. A lot of you have heard me say RTFQ for read the flipping question. This is kind of related to that. You've got to clearly be able to tell the, the client what the work is that you're going to provide to them. If you can't explain to the client what you're going to do for them and they don't understand it, it's not a good contract. This includes what are the deliverables? What is it that you're going to give to the client? Are you giving them a report? Are you giving them a design? Are you just giving them a recommendation? what specifically are you going to provide to the client. So scope is the first element from the engineering point of view. Schedule is the second element from the engineering point of view. This is all about when the work is going to get done. When does the work start? When does the work end? When can I start on work? When must I be done? Can I uh, when are the deliverables due? This is a really important part. Specifically, when am I supposed to give you the preliminary design? When are you supposed to give back to me your review of the preliminary design? When is the final design redue, due? The dates are critical, critical to, to the engineer. So the first one is scope. The second one is schedule. The third one is cost. Now, we say cost. Uh, we could also use the term price. So it's a cost to one person, one party, and it's a revenue to the other. But this is very simple. It's how much is the client paying the engineer for the work? It usually includes what form, whether it's a lump sum, whether it's time and materials, or unit pricing. It, exactly how the costs are paid and when the costs are paid are not part of the cost part. I'll explain that in a minute. The, but the cost is simply how much are you getting paid for the work? But you need to know the form of that, whether it's in a lump sum, time and materials, or unit pricing. The last element that's really important for us is the terms and conditions. The terms and conditions are all the details of how the contract will work. Um, there, we're going to do a lot of work in the next lesson on terms and conditions, um, and I'll, but I'll give you one example about uh, how the difference between scope, schedule, cost, and terms and conditions. For example, we said cost is how much you're going to get paid, but the terms and conditions will say how much, how will the, the payments be made? When do I have to bill the con, uh, the owner for the, for the work? How long does the owner have to pay me? If the owner's late in paying me, what are the interests that the owner owes me for late payment? So, so the terms and conditions are the how we execute all the details of it. They're really, really important. We're going to spend a whole lesson on them, and then you're going to do a whole contract negotiation on terms and conditions. So they're really, really important, but they're not the three primary elements of scope, schedule, and cost. Another example of a term and condition is, well, how do we terminate the contract? You know, when it, if the contract is not going the way we want, what are the rules for termination? If we terminate, what kind of payments do I get for the work that I have done but I haven't delivered to you? So the terms and conditions are really uh, complex and a lot of stuff. Um, another example is how are we going to res uh, uh, resolve disputes? Are we going to go to mediation as we talked about last week? Or are we going to go to arbitration? Is the arbitration going to be binding arbitration? So all these details about how we're going to execute the contract are important. But I want you to separate terms and conditions from the other three elements. The first element is scope. What are we going to do? The second element is schedule. 
when is it going to happen? And the third element is cost. How much is the client going to pay me for this work? So I hope that's clear. So in the legal side, we have to have an offer and acceptance and consideration. On the engineering side, we have to have scope, schedule, and cost. On both of them, we have terms and conditions, which is a key part of the contract. As I said, we're going to spend uh, next lesson on terms and conditions, and uh, you're going to do your negotiation on terms and conditions. So that's the quick overview of uh, this lesson. Be sure to read the reading material associated with this. I hope this helps you put that all in context. Let's talk about how we're actually going to execute the rest of this uh, lesson and all the online group work. So you have a pre-class group work uh, that's due next Tuesday. I've put everybody in groups in Blackboard. I'll show you the Blackboard here in just a minute. Um, those of you that hadn't signed up for a group, I put you in the few open slots that were left. So everybody's in a work group for this course on Blackboard. Now your pre-class group assignment is due Tuesday, March 31st. You no longer have individual homeworks for this, um, um, this block. What you have is this group work. Uh, so you need to download the attachment uh, for the assignment for less seven, uh, uh, assignment 11. I'll go through that in just a minute. There are three contracts that you need to analyze. The Los Angeles Air Force, or Air Force Base Environmental Assessment, the City of Rancho Palo Verde Services Agreement, and the Bellevue Youth Center Expansion contracts. These actually may be RFPs, they may be proposals, they may be contracts. That's actually one of the things that you need to evaluate. I'm calling them contracts here uh, just as a generic term. So um, you, when you look at these things, that's one of the things we're going to be asking you to do. Uh, then I want you to individuate, individually formulate your own responses to assignment 11. Spend some time, write them down on a piece of paper or write them down on a, on a Word document, but try and, and, and formulate your own responses. Then in Blackboard, under your team area, there's a wiki, which I've populated with the beginning of the assignment. And together, you all can add, uh, you can get on there, you can get the wiki, you can add stuff, you can edit it, you can talk to each other about it. But in the end, what I want you to have in that wiki is a finalized response to the assignment 11. And once you've got that finalized, one of you needs to um, um, download that out of the wiki and upload it into the assignment by the homework deadline, which is midnight, March 31st. If you run a little past midnight, I don't care. I just need to have it first thing in the morning and the next day when I go to work with it. So let me go to the Blackboard right now and walk you through where all these assignments are. So if we go here to Contracts and go to a Lesson 11, Contracts Engineer's point of view, here's our readings and our learning objectives, and then uh, down here you have the homework 11 and the homework prompt. And if you op open up the homework prompt, you're going to get this Microsoft Word file. Again, here's the readings. And there's two things I'm asking you to do in the homework. The first one is this little scenario where ASU is letting a contract to resurface parking lots. Your team is going to bid on these parking lots uh, and on this job. And I'm asking you to list five to seven very specific pieces of information you want to know from ASU in order for you to properly compare the bid for this. And you can assume this is a lump sum bid that's not particularly important. But be very specific about what it is uh, that you need to know in, in order to properly bid this job. That's the first exercise. The second one is to take the three contracts that we've outlined in there and for each one of them I want you to do the same analysis. The, the first question being asked is is this a request for proposal, a proposal or a contract? So that the, the article like that the artifact I've given you might be a, a, a request for proposal, it might be a proposal or it might be a contract. I need you to analyze those and determine which one it is. The second question I'm asking is what source selection is being used in this process? Is this a low bid selection, or a best value selection, or a QBS selection? Then I want you to answer the, the three questions about scope, schedule, and cost. First one is, what is the scope? What is the contract you're providing to the client? The second is, what is the schedule for the work? When are things due? 
And the third question is, what is the cost? Is it clear what the cost? Now you'll find when you review these, these um, three artifacts that these aren't all going to be clear. In some cases, some of this information is not going to be included in the, in the article that I gave you to read. That's fine. That's what you need to say, though. But look carefully, and I want you to evaluate all three of these. Now let's talk about the process for doing it and how we're going to do that. So in your Blackboard, if you come down here to Groups and open up Groups, you'll see the group that you're in. You'll see a work group. You might see some other groups because I had some other groups set up for this course, but you'll see a work group. And if you click on that group, it'll list all the people that are in that group. And then you have these tools here. You can actually open a collaborate session for your group. Um, if you want to work through work uh, together through collaborate, uh, you can exchange files. You can have a blog. You can have group discussion board. Uh, you can set up a task, which is not going to be important for this one. This one's a little handy if you just want to email everybody in the group. And it also tells you what assignments your group has. We're going to be using this wiki, or at least I'm suggesting you use this wiki. You don't really have to do this, but I think it'll help. So if you go to the group wiki, I've already pre-populated in every wiki the little questions you have to respond to. So if you look over here on the right, there's two things in this particular wiki for your group. There's a homework 11 question 1, and there's a homework 11 question 2. So let's go back and look at homework 11 question 1. In homework 11 question 1, you notice that it says, hey, just list the 10 items you want me to do in this. this so this is really the question. And so, so you can work together. Uh, you can edit the wiki. So any one of you can come in here and add information to this and say, you know, and put the list. So you can say the list, uh, and then you can put your bullets. And one thing you might want to know is when can we start work and and you can submit that and it'll it, the wiki will tell you when the last time somebody has edited to it and so you can edit this you can all put it together and when you're done you should have your list of 10 things um, so that's how the wiki works you can also just make comments on it and so when you go to question two I've outlined each one of these uh, here's the Los Angeles space, you know, is it a request for proposal or proposal for a contract? So you all can start editing that, decide whether it, which one it is it. And, and so what I, I think you'll find this a handy tool for you to work together. You don't all have to be there at the same time to do this. One of you can put a thing in. If you're not sure about it, you can make a comment down here that says, uh, I'm not sure, Damien. Is right uh, about the um, uh, LA AFB contract. I think it's an RFB, and you can add that comment in there, and, and y'all can look at it, and then. But when you're done, this will all be edited out as one document. That's the idea, anyway. And then once that's all done, uh, and you're done with the um, um, the wiki uh, and then you can come back to your group I'm not sure exactly how to navigate back to the group but you can do it this way for sure you can come back to your group and when you're all happy with that then you can come down here on homework 11 and actually sub, um, submit the homework 11 so I hope that uh, helps to clarify how we're planning to do this I'll apologize to this group for putting stuff in their wiki but uh, you can delete it um, so let's go back and finish our little presentation, if I can find it again. Here we go. So, um, work in your teams to edit the wiki, and when you finalize the answers, um, just copy everything out of the wiki, put it in a Word doc, you know, and submit it. Okay, then on Wednesday, so you're going to submit that on Tuesday night by midnight, or 1 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the morning. I don't really care as long as it's there before I get up in the morning. I'm going to look at all your guys' input to that, and I'll get prepared for our uh, uh, collaborate session on Wednesday at 4 o'clock. So we'll get together at 4 o'clock. We'll review what everybody's done there and try and summarize it and, and come up with a good understanding so we have all these lesson objectives uh, for the day figured out. Um, and that's pretty much it. I hope that's clear. I hope this makes it work a lot better next week. Be sure, be sure, be sure to get with your groups and meet.
everybody's in a group. If you have any questions about that, uh, uh, post up a question on the um, discussion board or email me. You know the contact methods. Um, anyway, hope this works. You have a great day, and I will see you online next week and in a collaborate session on Wednesday. Have a great day.